Hi, it's me, Roger, doing another video. Um, anyway, um, sitting out here over the holidays, and it's been a beautiful day so far, and I've been working on cleaning up a lot of my boat, which I've indicated in past videos. is my favorite time of the year to get some things done, place the plugs in the boat, lower unit lube, got a new cover, stuff like that, which I'll do later. But uh, this video, I wanted to focus on some of the lures that I used. I did my last video on my setups and my rods and reels, uh, I'm going to do this one on crankbaits. So uh, crankbaits are one of my favorite types of fishing. I do, I have a lot of them, and I have kind of some different sizes and colors, and I wanted to kind of go over those and show people what I have. And what I do may be particular to them to modify them that helps uh, give me the confidence I need. So anyway, I'll start off right here. All right. Um, this is what I call my small crankbait box. Um, this has small crankbaits. Uh, that I usually fish um, anywhere from one to probably six foot width. Smaller profile, maybe earlier in the year when the, the bait fish are a little smaller. And this top rope right here is used as what we called uh, chartreuse blueback, fire tiger, uh, something like that. This is primarily one of the main spring and early summer colors you're going to see in the North Texas area. These right here baits, well, like this is called a uh, deep little end. It's got a little longer uh, bill on it to help it go around to that five to maybe seven foot range. And I've got a little end, which is a little shallower, which is maybe, you know, let me see if that's a little oily. Maybe in that one to four to foot range, depending on what size line you use. Anyway, um, this bait right here in particular is a bomber it's a really good lure but see how the bill is shaped more of a a oval in front that gives it a little tighter wiggle as you're going through the water versus something like a square bill like this one right here let me pull it out a square bill like this right here which has a wider wobble bounces off rocks limbs etc and stuff but anyway these are the main crankbaits I throw early in the year. If I'm fishing slow, I'm fishing some riprap, some isolated laydowns and stuff like that. I've got very different colors, but what I've found is that these colors right here that I have are primarily suit me on any lake I can go to. I've got some shed colors, some bone color, a clear Tennessee shed, some crawfish. Um, some more shad colors. I start getting to the shad colors as I start going on into the summer and later on in the year. Um, topwaters, you know, got some poppers, lucky 13s, chuggers, torpedoes, devil's horses, some big Zara spooks right here. So one of the things I'm going to point out are things that I do to my crankbait, crankbaits that help me feel to give me a little confidence. One of the things I do is I put an oval split ring on the front of it. That helps me with um, tying the line on the lure that I don't get the line situated in the groove of the split ring and that creates a weakness. That split ring always lines up perfectly where I'm pulling the knot down on the very end of the oval on that split ring. Also, by having this, it gives it a little wider wobble and free play when you're pulling it through the water. One of the other things I do is I change out hooks on these, and I use triple grip hooks. Might have a little less hookups, but once you get a fish on, they stay buttoned up the way they curve and stuff like that. These are short shank. I use a red hook in front to kind of mimic what you might see from a fish flaring its gills or maybe an injury, it's wounded or something like that. Then use a regular hook on the trailing hook. Let me see. That's my small crankbaits. As I get into some of my mid-sized crankbaits, you'll see a little larger profile. As like I said, as you start getting into that late spring, um, early summer, I start using bigger baits to, as the shad and the bait fish start growing a little bigger. Um, got some shad color right here, a couple crawfish. Uh, rattle traps, this is where I keep my rattle traps right here too, different sizes. 
a lot of these are really really um, good baits for what I call search baits you can chunk and wind and you can keep fishing those until you start getting a bite and once you've located some fish then you could slow down and start getting in having a more refined presentation with some of your crankbaits right here um, I'll show you one of my favorite baits this is probably one has I've used these right here and I find that baits that you find that are so worn out like this the eyes are gone the paints wore off etc those things are fish catchers something about them either the way they wiggle the way they move the sound something about that bait sets it off from the others that they really like um, favorite color is once you get down here to get these chrome ones down here uh, to where they're all worn off or scuffed up are great gold gold later in the year once they get scuffed up and sometimes I'll help the scuffing process I'll take my knife and just start sco scoring a few lines to help that paint go off bigger crankbaits these are what I use as I get later in the year the bait fish have now grown larger size the summertime the bigger fish are looking for a bigger profile bait to eat these are my DD14s DD22s I've got some uh, larger suspending crankbaits uh, same different colors you'll see here go to here go to here it's the colors that I wind up pretty much fishing all the time all right and I do the same thing I change out the hooks or red hooks I change out the split rings to the way I want them done all right so that's really my crankbait setup. I know a lot of guys have more crankbaits than me, but what I found out over fishing tournaments for the last, you know, 20 years uh, have led me down to these colors, these crankbaits, and I've had them for a really long time. I have retrievers that I keep in the boat that once they get hung up, I'll put it down there to get that crankbait back because I hate losing them. Because when I first started buying them, they were $2.99 to $3.99. Now the good crankbaits are five, six, seven, eight dollars for a good crankbait. So it, it behooves you when you start fishing these that you have a lure retriever, you're ready to go get them when they do happen. Now, as far as uh, other crankbaits, I have another box I keep, which I call my replenishments. These are different baits right here of similar of the size one, maybe a few oddball colors, things like that but uh, these are baits I use if I start losing baits from here I can replenish this from here usually I've taken the hooks off of these and stuff like that so when I find one I can swap the hooks on it put it into this box and I'm ready to go so anyway that's my crankbait setups um, usually each year this time of the year and I want to show you one thing uh, these boxes, crankbaits are very susceptible to rust with moisture in the boat, especially for like me who keeps it outside. I drill holes in all of my plastic boxes. That helps the moisture kind of air out and stop the moisture from condensating and getting down on my crankbaits. Also, I squirt a little uh, light thing of gun oil on them each year. It helps coat the bait and give it a little more of that rust proofing. Anyway. Um, I'll do some videos later. I'll talk about terminal tackle, spinner baits, and stuff like that. But anyway, hope this helps y'all in y'all's fishing and getting up to the 2018 season. Thank y'all for tuning in. God bless y'all. Bye bye.